It's the Cube covering Sapphire Now 2017. Brought to you by SAP Cloud Platform and HANA Enterprise Cloud. Hey, welcome back everyone to our special Sapphire Now 2017 coverage from our studio. I want to thank SAP Cloud Platform and SAP Enterprise Cloud for sponsoring our three-day coverage that allows us to go out and do some original content. Um, also, we have Google I.O. going on, some coverage there. We'll, we'll, we'll get some of those segments on. Also, uh, other events going all around tech. Wanted to bring in uh, to this studio session for discussion is Bill Norton, a CUBE alumni, the chief scientist at Console Connect also known as Dr. Peering, a real expert in on networking and how networks are built and how they run and, and the impact of how packets move around the network. And of course, networks are being abstracted away to uh, software and of course, no better person to talk about software-defined networking, the changes in the network landscape, and more importantly, the security implications. Bill Norton here inside our CUBE conversation. Good to see you again. Great to see you, John. So you've got a couple of white papers. I want to, one, I wanted to call you in two, under twofold. One, a lot of SIF going on at the network, okay? As much as people are moving up the stack as fast as they can, the network still has got a lot of action going on. Software-defined, scaling issues, now security issues, yeah. still an important part, you still got to move packet from eight, point A to point B. Um, now things, are, the cloud has certainly escalated the conversation. Absolutely. Your we're, thoughts. We're at, a, we're at a crossroads right now. We have two forces that are colliding. The first is increased dependence on the cloud, as more companies are using cloud for business critical activities, uh, as in you can't take orders if you can't access your salesforce.com service or maybe you have uh, cooperating colleagues in different parts of the planet that are using a, a, a shared uh, storage system, right? And they can't cooperate, they can't do their thing unless they can get access to that infrastructure. So there's great dependence on these cloud-based applications, which is clashing with the um, continued vulnerabilities of the, the public so internet. the internet's that stress, and, and it's like changing the airplane engine out 35,000 feet. A lot of stuff's going on. What's the bottom line? What are the core issues right now that people are facing? Is it just availability, or is it just bad packet uh, movement, bad network design? What's the core issue right now facing uh, the, the stress on the internet? You know, it's funny, I work with customers all the time in my daily job. And the number one reason that they come to console connect is for security reasons. It's so funny that every single time it's security reasons. They want to be directly connected to those business critical or mission critical applications. Um, and th the reason is, is clear. If you're directly connected, the shortest path between two points is a straight line, right? So you get better performance and better reliability. Unless the backhoe hits the link and you're dead. No, that's physical connection. So before we get further, I want you to take yeah. a minute to explain console connect, because I just want to get that out of the way so you can set the context sure. for the conversation. What do you guys do? I know what you do, but share with the audience what you do. Yeah, uh, console connect is a cloud interconnection company. We believe that what the internet needs is to have the ability to directly connect to mission critical destinations, whether that be a storage service or an infrastructure as a service company, um, maybe it's a particular SaaS application. If you depend on it, uh, if it's business critical, and when I say business critical, what I mean is if it's down for a couple of hours and you can't access it, then your business is adversely impacted. So that's what I call business critical. If it's business critical, you ought to be directly connected because you can mitigate against the concern of not being able to access that particular service. All right, so now you have also two things that you brought as props, um, white papers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me just see those for a second. Yeah, What's the first um, one? This one is called Cloud Connections, and this is a, a paper I did when I started initially doing some research on how cloud systems work. This is a comparison between the interconnection regimes of AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure. And what I found in the research is that these interconnection um, mechanisms are completely different from one another. It's, it's so interesting that they not only chose different names for all of their services, but in the case of interconnection for direct connections, they also chose a different model for interconnecting. So for example, Amazon Web Services has what's called Direct Connect. And I talk about how that's set up in both a, a, a single and a redundant path 
uh, to access into your, your uh, AWS resources. But if you look at Google Cloud's uh, interconnection, they call it Google Cloud Interconnect, and that's really a peering mm -hmm. with propagation. It's kind of <laughs> like peering with somebody, but leaking those routes to the other side. So yeah. the Google Cloud Interconnect partner is the one who's propagating that essentially BGP peering across the infrastructure. <laughs> and Azure is completely different. Azure decided they wanted to have two bundles of three tuple peering relationships. <laughs> one for private resources you can't access over the internet, one for public, which you can access over the internet, and one for Microsoft services. Well, so I laid all this so out. And they call that express route connectivity provider? That's right. I think that's the word you use yeah. here. All right, so let's bottom line. We now have four, four uh, uh, okay, three major horses on the track. What, is there any other ones in here? Or oh, yeah. you just look at the three ones you did? Um, I chose those three because AWS, according to Gartner, is you know, whatever, 14 times larger than the next 10 competitors combined. Mm -hmm. So that's obvious one to, to put in there. But Google Cloud and Azure are making strong And they have good tech, in. and they just had their event too. I did watch that network diagram. Uh, Amazon does share a lot. Um, James Hamilton, she had a lot of information at reInvent. Oh, Look, he's so popular, the phone call, phones are ringing. Um, you want to grab that? No, that's okay. You sure? <laughs> you move on, just got on, is your wife calling? <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so bottom line here is, you got the horses on the track, three horses. Yeah. Amazon, Google, yeah. Azure, who's better? Um, you know, they're just different. They're well, just pick different. One. I think it's really pick interesting. One. If you had to bet your life on one, which would it be? It depends what resources you need to get access to. It really does. Maslow's hierarchy of needs, go. <laughs> Google, um, Amazon, or I, I would Azure. I would observe this, I'll get in trouble for saying this, but I would observe that AWS seems to appeal to the broad IT crowd. If you're uh, an engineer, you like me, you like to hack code, you might want to play around with the Google Cloud uh, platform, because that's that's pretty neat. And it was designed by engineers, so you can see what their mindset yeah, was when YouTube they designed it. Yeah, and YouTube is not a small operation. Oh, no, no, not at yeah. all. I mean, it moves a lot of traffic. Yeah. So they've got, Google knows their traffic game. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and of course, massive scale for all these guys. But I also like Azure for, for .NET types of activities, and of course you can do any workload yeah. on any one so of these. So what you're saying is, is that some run great on the dry days, some run gay, and the, the horses run good on the rain days. So the different horses, different courses, yeah. strengths, e weaknesses. But As Dave Vellante says, horses for courses. But you know what the really interesting thing is, is when you can connect those together. We just announced over at the ITW conference our Cloud Nexus product that we couldn't be more excited about. What, to explain that, what, it, what does it do? Yeah, it's a, um, it's a mechanism for um, you to take your availability zones or your regions in one cloud mm -hmm. and be able to send traffic through the Cloud Nexus to get access into another cloud or another region or another availability zone and do so without having to go all the way back to your corporate data center to exchange that traffic. Got it, so basically not a lot of latency. Not a lot of latency, it's going to be direct, it's not going to be intermixed with other traffic, it's a internet bypass, just like our... Okay, what's that other paper you have there? Let's see Yeah, that just one. real quickly, this one's called the Emerging Private Internet. Okay, how to build your own private business ecosystem for business... And by the way, you're the author of both of these, so I'm just going to hold it up there. Um, true private cloud market share is going to be in the billions of dollars. Wikibon yeah. just put out a study on that. So hybrid and private clouds are still going to be there heavily with duty. So the notion of private is yeah. going to be around. Well, What's was, this paper find? Th this is a little bit different. This is in response to the dying attack of April 21st or 22nd, I forgot which it is. Um, when that attack happened, that took down dozens of very popular websites that depended on that DNS service. Yeah. And talking with a lot of the folks that were affected, they recognized that in order to not have that problem happen in the future, they're going to have to have direct connections to those mission critical destinations. So no matter what happens in the public internet, their critical interconnections and their critical data paths are still solid and robust. So this is the private side of the internet where you tie down, you essentially lock in connectivity to those mission critical destinations. And the public side is still where you deliver your traffic out to all those who yeah, out can in the wild. Get access. Yeah, access exactly. to all the, you know, the routes that could be manipulated and or policy-based manipulated as yeah. well. So, so this, this is, a, this is a, a little bit of a trend now that we're seeing as companies are migrating over to this new platform. I mean, it's like a whole like you know new virtual roadway has got to be reconstructed. I mean, I'm fascinated with what, you know, we like to geek out on wide area network stuff in the past we have, and, but to me, I think that whole WAN, wide area network concepts from you know origination to final destination on the packet path is, really complicated with cloud, and now we have multi-cloud. Yeah. How do you see 
the routes and, and the maps and all the naming, all the addressing, I mean, evolving to support the one the capacity? You know, it's an interesting question. I don't think my crystal ball is any better than, than, than yours is. <laughs> well, you but, got two good papers here. And I, I do think we're migrating towards a um, two halves of the Internet. The public Internet, which everyone knows and loves and great, gives you great connectivity globally. Um, but, you know, that traffic that is attacking somebody else is traversing the same routers and links that your traffic yeah. depends on. So uh, I think we're going to see... I want to secure roadways highly patrolled and without bad guys. And it's solid, and it, it's robust. It, traffic is not intermingled with others, so your traffic is not impacted by the traffic of others. Console Connect is your company, had a couple of name changes, but you guys are growing really fast. You do a great team, by the way. Um, and, uh, but you're just going, kind of doing your business and, and it's successful. I got to ask you, what's the main reason why people come to you guys besides your awesome technical knowledge and ability to <laughs> write great white papers and be Dr. Peering? well known in the industry, but you know, seriously, I mean, yeah. why are people coming to you right now? Is it because of the alternative? What's the main reason? Yeah, the, the main reason, as I said before, is, is security. The, uh, the fact that any traffic that's being used to DDoS against somebody else is traversing the same routers and links that you depend on. So your traffic, fundamentally in the public internet, is intermingled with other people's traffic, and therefore your traffic can be impacted by other people's traffic. For the mission critical traffic, you want to have that go across no intermingling elements. So you'd like to have that be directly connected. So security is a number one. Number two and number three kind of go back and forth. It's either better performance or better reliability depending on what issues that particular customer is facing. All right, Bill Norton, Chief Scientist Console Connect here inside the inside the cube for special coverage of SAP Sapphire 2017. Thanks for watching and stay with us for more after this short break. <laughs>